being black in America. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what show you've been on. doesn't matter where you work, nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. innocent, innocent black people do get profiled and that's what needs to stop. Everybody around the world is tired of injustice. And you sit there and you watch it and you can't turn an eye. You have to pay attention to it. We got to deal with it. As terrible as it is out there with the pandemic going on, we have had a chance to just sit and just absorb it and just say to ourselves, we're, we're tired of it. We're not going to let it happen anymore. And it needs to change. And we're talking about basic human civility here the right to walk down the street and not feel like a criminal, to be innocent until proven guilty, not guilty until proven innocent, which that idealism has definitely been perpetuated over so many years and, and it needs to change. <laughs> I had something terrible happen to me. Um, Speak on it. Speak on it. <laughs> I got wrongfully detained during this pandemic. I was put on the ground by officers. I had a knee on me. You know, I um. They didn't have masks on. They didn't have um, uh, gloves or anything. You know, I was wet. I was on the ground, the corona ground. So that needs to change. And I'm innocent. When the footage dropped for Ahmaud Arbery, um, a week prior to that, I was actually on Ventura. I was exercising. As I'm walking across the street, Corbin and Ventura, I see an officer to the left of me. I'm not thinking anything of it because I'm a law-abiding citizen. I look to my left, the officer, I see him coming with guns blazing. I see him, I see him say, get on the ground, put your hands up like you're an airplane. As he's looking at me, I'm thinking that he's making a mistake. So I'm looking past where he's looking. I'm looking at him and I'm looking past me because I'm like, whoever they're about to get, it's just about to be terrible. No, he was coming to get me. Four officers got their guns blazing. They tell me to get on the ground, spread my arms out. They put me in cuffs. The officer took his knee, put it on my neck. Um, it wasn't as long as uh, George Floyd, but um, I know how that feels. When you decided to share that story, you also recreated that moment. You got yeah. back on the ground, had someone put their knee on your neck again. What was that like? It was emotional. That same infuriation came up. Like, it, it's just, you're reliving it again. To have to go there, it's, it's mad emotional. I literally could have been George Floyd. We, as a country, can't breathe anymore. And we are tired. We are sick and we are tired of it. I can't breathe! I was happy to be able to show people that there is no change. Being black in America is what it is. Being black in America, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what show you've been on. It doesn't matter where you work, nothing. Innocent black people do get profiled and that's what needs to stop. And it wasn't even supposed to be a video for the work. I just put it out there for my Instagram followers and I was working with a couple of influencers to do something cool. I said, why are you doing this? Like, what's wrong? They said, you fit the description of a black man in this, in this area um, with gray sweatpants on and a gray shirt. Um, I told them, I said, if you look Google right now, Jay Farrow, you will see that you made a big mistake. A minute later, after I was detained in cuffs and keep in mind, they've already asked me, do you want to, you, you want to sit on the side? I'm like, no, I don't even want to be on the ground. They come back. They say, we're sorry. Uh, we just got a call in that it's not you. I say, yo, get these, get these, excuse my French, get these effing cuffs off of me. I've only been able to, to see it over the years. But to finally have that happen to me personally, I understand fully the rage of all the black people this has happened to, that my folks it has happened to over the years and keeps on going, keeps happening. I know a lot of you guys have talked about Dave Chappelle's eight minutes and 46 seconds special. This man kneeled on a man's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Can you imagine that? Jay, because of your own experience, do you think you're going to represent what you went through on stage? I will tell you, I have prayed about this. I have, I have sat on it. I was apprehensive at first to say anything about it just because of the severity of the other situations in America where Black people have lost their lives, and I didn't. I wasn't so gun ho to put it out at first, but I said, it's a message 
that if I can get it out to somebody, to one person, maybe I can help and give some perspective. I have to talk about it. I do. It's hard to find punchlines in that pain, but I'm finding punchlines in them, you know, and- Pale title, by the way. I was gonna say the same thing. I was gonna say the same title, thing. Pal. We we what are you saying? That's a dope title. Punch what were you saying? Punch, Punch lines in my pain. My pain. 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 <laughs> Yo, yeah, hey. <laughs> We're just here to help you get money. You need me to call Netflix? Just just remind me what I say. I got ADD. I said punches. It's, it's recorded, bro. It's punch recorded. Punch lines with your pain. Punch yeah. lines with pain. Yeah. There this we go. Life feels like as a black person in America, honestly. Yeah. Like you just said it. We done. Yeah.